Hey guys, my name is Kirill, and today I have a very special guest, and uh, we'll find out who he is in just a second. So, why don't we just start by introducing yourself? Great. Well, first of all, Kirill, let me thank you for actually even inviting me. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, my name is Teacher Will. I am a teacher of English. I am a native English uh, speaker. I was born in the United States of America. And currently, I am a teacher of English in the country of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, where I've been teaching now. Uh, actually, the first time I came to Saudi Arabia was October 12th, 2011. Okay. So I'm going, what is that, six years now? Yeah. Before I actually was a teacher, I was never really, uh, I didn't come from a teaching background. I actually came from a business background. And so in terms of teaching English, this was my first international experience. All right. So let's start with question number one. And that will be, how long does it take to master your English? Let's say when a person has never studied English before. So a lot of people have been asking the same question over the years. I'd like to hear a native speaker's opinion on this. I think that's a brilliant question, and I get that question a lot as well. Uh, I'm going to be very honest with you, and your followers might not like this, but I'm just going to be honest. I think learning a language, think about one's own native language. Learning a language is lifelong. It's a lifelong process. And so the question becomes, to me at least, is the aspect of when one feels as though that they are fluent. So let's say, for example, you have a beginner, a, an individual that has no understanding or the basic level of English, and they're looking to have an understanding of maybe giving directions or traveling abroad or being able to have a conversation and feeling comfortable with that conversation. I would say on average for an individual, let's say to go from beginner to let's say low, low um, intermediary is anywhere from 12 months to 18 months. So that's from one year and a year and a half. That might not be an answer that people would want, but that's been really my experience. Why do I say that? If, if an individual thinks of their own native language, let's say it's Ukrainian or it's Arabic or it's French, well, when you're learning English, what comes important to me is it's the aspect of fluency. And basically, fluency for me is, is the same way that you're able to understand your own native language is the way that you're able to understand English. That takes a lot of work, that takes a lot of practice. And so I would say on average, a year to a year and a half. The last point that I would add on that is, is that um, if you would then ask me the question, what steps are involved? I think it's important to recognize that it's not your native language. And so as a result of that, it's okay to make a mistake. You have to practice and enjoy the language that's right. try to be immersed to speak the language as much as possible all right that's good thank you very much wonderful and i was wondering how often do you have to take classes for example if you want to get to a lower intermediate level in let's say 12 to 15 months oh brilliant question corral uh, are you talking like classes uh Okay, let me answer the question this way. I would say that um, you want to practice as much as you can and immerse yourself in the language as much as you can. So when you're talking about classes, whether you're talking about online classes, face-to-face -face classes, university classes, the first thing is, is to figure out what method of studying English works best for you because no one size fits all. Now, then if you would ask me the question, I would say on average, if you could study English anywhere from 30 minutes to one hour a day. All right. Every single day. That's every right. single, every single day. And, and, and that could be the simplest thing from listening to a television program, to listening to music, to practicing with an online teacher. 
but anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour a day each day. Because again, each person, what I'm doing, Corel, sir, is, is that I'm giving on average. It's, it's kind of like the old adage or the old saying, practice makes perfect. That's right. And practice makes perfect. I, I, I want to say it in Russian just for, for, for my subscribers. Sure, sure. Повторение мать учения. Practice makes perfect. Okay. In Russian, if you translate it word for word, it sounds like repeating is learning or repeating is the mother of learning. I love that. I love that comment. Listen, I, I, have, a, I have a thing what I do on my, on my social medias and I'm like, you have to speak, 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 speak. You know, there are some people that are like, I don't know how to speak. I'm so shy. I can't. I don't have confidence. Okay. Uh, to your followers, listen, when you were learning your native language, you just spoke. You didn't care. You just spoke. Right. So English is no different. You have to, for me at least, it's understanding the context. And so you have to speak as much as you can. And when you're afraid, that's okay. It's normal, but you're not going to be afraid always. And English to me, it's uh, two things. Number one, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's step by step by step by step by step. All right. You know what I tell my students when they are too shy and too, you know, too afraid to speak? I just take my pencil, show it to them and say, all right. The worst thing I could do to you is just do this, you know, just that's it. Exactly. You can switch it off whenever you feel like it. Exactly. It. I think to your point, Corel, I think a lot of things, is, I mean, you know, we'll probably talk about it later, but I think the one thing that I tell my students is, is English is a mindset. Exactly. It is anything in life is a mindset, but particularly English, it's a mindset. It's a, it's a can do attitude that you can do it. You are, I did a video on that a long time ago. It's kind of like, I'm sorry, maybe I'm a little dumb, but you are what you think. If you think that you cannot learn English, then you will convince yourself that you will not do it. So ultimately you are what you think. That's right. So let's recap what you've just said. So learning English is kind of a lifetime process yes. when it must become a part of your of you, of, of your, you. Of your yeah. daily routine of whatever, yeah. whatever you do on a daily basis. Correct. So that's lifestyle. That's lifestyle. It's, it's lifestyle. And I think in, in addition to that, half the battle is your mind. I mean, again, I, I, it's a mindset. You have to make English part of your life in your daily routine. Figure out the way that works best, best for you. No one person can help you learn except you, once you make that decision to learn. Wonderful. Yes, thank you. All right. So I think it's about time we went to question number two. Okay. All right. So question number two is, so you are an adult. You are not a student any longer. So you have a job, a family, and you want to learn English in order to get a promotion at work, to travel the world, whatever. So yes. We, everybody has their reasons. All right. So. Your um, goal is to be able to communicate with people and to be able to be understood. So that's what, what's important. So you need, that's your strategy, kind of strategy a lot of people have uh, these days. So they want to find a teacher and they want to do self-study. Self-study, so okay. Yeah, so do you have anything to, to say on that? So if you have a teacher who you can uh, practice with, let's say, two times a week. Okay. And what about the amount of self-study you have to do in order to improve your level of English? I would say if you're doing self-study, self-study is a wonderful method. And I particularly respect those individuals that do self-study because they might be a little bit more disciplined than others. So if indeed that, let's say you have an individual that uh, you have one of your students that is um, learning from you and the great work that you do, then after in terms of self-study, what I recommend is again, 30 minutes to an hour in whatever method that you feel that your student feels that works. Because it's a great thing if the teacher is there is to motivate or to inspire or to teach whatever particular lesson that you're teaching. The self-study becomes, you have to reinforce that. You have to repeat that. 
So again, I would say anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. And if you want to go longer, that's fine. Within the hour, let's just use as a baseline an hour. Make sure within that hour that you take at least a 10 minute break because it's been my experience. Whereas if you just go or a student just goes one hour straight, then they won't have the ability to retain a lot of the information or better lack of term, they'll be brain fried. So just take a 10 minute break, clear your mind and get back into it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, guys. So you want to avoid information overload. Yes. You don't need that. You don't need yes. that. Nobody needs that. But again, those students who do self-study mm -hmm. progress much more faster than those who don't. Am I, right? I, would, yeah, I would agree, definitely, because I think that their motivation and their desire is different than their motivation is desire. I would go back to something that you said earlier, and that the question is, I think that in terms of self-study, you, you said it earlier. What is your purpose for learning English? That's right. And once, for me, when I tell my students is, is, is that, okay, you have a goal and your goal is to learn English. Okay, that's great. But what is your specific purpose? And then after you develop your sp specific purpose, is then you want to identify what I call SMART goals. Have SMART goals, which is an abbreviation or an acronym. So have your goals be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Very good. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Next question is, all right, a person has been learning English for quite a while, let's say a year or two, two and a half. So it, it turned into a kind of routine for that person. Mm -hmm. right. So the motivation starts fluctuating. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so what do you do to keep your motivation up? What That's, do you do wow. to, to be eager, you know, to, to stay alert, to be eager to learn all the time, to be that's a, greedy that, for knowledge? Yes. That's a great question. I'm sorry, brother, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's a great question. Um, I would think of uh, a couple of things. Number one, you have to remind yourself and motivate yourself constantly. You have to, rem I think what's important is, is that regardless of the length of level or years that you've been studying, you have to remind yourself and motivate yourself. That to me is point number one. What is your reason for doing it? Now, after you do that, I think that after you motivate yourself is then you have to challenge yourself. And what do I mean by challenge yourself? Get out of your comfort zone and learn something new. Now, let's say, for example, on that individual, they probably would be low intermediate to, you know, middle intermediate. So there are different ways that you could do. For example, what I would recommend is, is that watch a debate. Very and debate, good. watch a debate would be one because you would learn about different debating styles. Perhaps you would learn about different vocabulary. You would be able to be involved in critical analysis. So one would be watching a debate. If you are movie lovers, what I would encourage you to do is, is watch movies without subtitles. Very good. So therefore, you could focus on your listening skills as an example. And the other thing, so... To recap on that is watch a debate, watch movies. And um, I think also what is important, and, and the last thing I would say is, is that you, in terms of challenging yourself, what I would encourage you to do is, is that particularly for those individuals that like writing, write about what you think That's or right. write about a television program or something that interests you. Because I do believe to be an effective uh, a more effective uh, speaker. And most of the time, at least, I don't know if this is the case with you, Carell, but most of the time, most of the students that I have, they're interested in speaking. Not to say that they don't pay attention to the other uh, English skills, but at least this, I just want to speak. One of the things that I would encourage people in terms of motivating themselves and challenging themselves is learn how to write. Because in my opinion, when you become an effective writer, it only enhances your speaking. That's right. It does. It really does. All right. Thank you very much. Good. So guys, getting out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself. So those are two keys to your motivation. Yes. Very good. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next question is, how do you... Well, actually, I mean, it's going to be about... The answer to this question is going to be about the same, I think. But still, okay. maybe you have something 
else to recommend. Okay. Um, what do you do when you are an upper intermediate or an advanced student? All right. Okay. So um, you understand a lot. You can speak fluently. You you're really comfortable with 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 your English, but you still want to improve. You want to improve all the time because you are really motivated, but you come to a dead end. So you don't know what to do. What other things could, you know, just propel you to the next level? Mm, I would say focus on your, okay. Beautiful question. I would say very good. If someone feels it's at their ever level, or if they're at that level where they're stuck and that happens, what I would suggest is focus on your weakness and or what I'm going to call weakness, but areas of development. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say, for example, that, you know, you're an expert in vocabulary. Well, you can make your vocabulary and, and, and specific to particular industries. For example, you could focus on ESP, English for specific English purposes for vocabulary. That would be one thing. Focusing on your, your areas of development. And what do I mean by that? Perhaps I'm saying it in a different way. We are both teachers, regardless if we are native or non-native teachers. I'm going to make an I statement. There are things that I am not good at. And I think what becomes honest, uh, if someone is stuck, is to have a very honest conversation with him or herself and figure out what is then next for me to do a self-assessment. So look at, do an inventory, do a baseline, really have an honest assessment with yourself and then in consultation with you, Corel, right? In terms of saying like, what do I need to improve on? Because there's, if, if one makes the argument that a, that a language is continuous and a language is lifelong, then I respect the fact that someone feels as though that they're stuck or they've learned everything possible. When that's happened and then actually had a, a student actually said that to me, oh, teacher, I know everything there is to know about English. <laughs> I've actually had that experience. I know right. everything there is to know about English. And I'm like, okay, really? Well, that's great. What I did was, is, and I said, well, what's your favorite subject? And they were like, grammar, I love grammar. And we drew, I, I had grammar exercises drilled down from the present continuous all the way up to the future perfect. And so, again, I would say focus on your areas of development and learn something new that you've always wanted to know, that you've always wanted to learn. And then if you then are still stuck, then I would say is, is that you would yeah, my recommendation would be to find out, find either two things. Number one, find the person that you think is this subject matter expert about English and have a conversation with them. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That, so that was something new. Very good. So I think that um, the viewers and my subscribers are going to be happy to get that, that, piece, that particular piece of advice you've just given. Thank All right. You. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so we have a couple of questions left. Okay. And there are so many different textbooks, TV series, mm. you name it, you know. So there is so much information around. So when you have too much of something, sometimes you don't know how to choose right. something that is right for you. So my next question is, uh, you as a native English speaker and is a wonderful teacher whom I really respect and admire. What would you recommend those who love learning by watching, listening, oh, reading, okay. and you know, getting some information from things other than textbooks? Great. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick, uh, in case your followers are new to me, I'm going to do something that you're familiar with, Carol, very quickly. Public service announcement. <laughs> Okay, so listen, the only person that's learning you, listen, all of Teacher Carell's followers here, listen to me. You are the only one that is learning English, okay? And, one, and the beautiful thing about English is, is that it is so unique. You are a unique individual, and so therefore, the method that works for you is works for you. So if you then say to me, hey, Teacher Will, what book, what, what TV show, what What's next for me? What I would say is the following. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I, love, I would. Say, I love the gesture. 
Thank you. What I would say is the following. You, you do something that you enjoy. So for example, a person has a higher propensity of learning or, or learning the language in terms of if they enjoy it. If you like sports, read about sports, watch about sports, cooking, whatever. What I would say is the following. On average, I can say this. When students have asked me that question um, in terms of TV shows, okay, I will give you TV shows that my students have generally recommended, and then I will give you my personal shows. Thank you. A lot of my uh, a lot of my students recommend Friends. A lot of my students recommend Blackish, um, and a lot of my yeah. So those are the two they definitely recommend. They say, "Oh, I love Friends. I love Blackish." I'm like, "Okay, that's good." Shows that I like uh, for various different reasons is is that if you, I highly recommend How to Get Away with Murder as one. I recommend How um, how to Get Away with Murder. If you are a comic per person, I recommend The Flash or Arrow. If you like uh, suspense or drama, I recommend Game of Thrones. Again, those are my recommendations. You do things that you enjoy. What are your interests? So that's the key takeaway, all right? Whatever your interests are, as you read about, so then you get a level, or you watch, you get a level of comfortability. That is, so that's number one. Number two is, I highly recommend before television shows, documentaries. That's right. Very documentaries good. are very good resources where you can learn English with or without subtitles in terms of songs. <laughs> uh, what is your genre genre and type of music? So that is very diverse. I mean, I love, it depends Corel in terms of, again, what the individual uh, likes to uh, like or what they like to listen to. I recommend, um, I'm kind of old school. Old school is an idiom, like I like old music. So I kind of uh, would recommend anyone that enjoys uh, rhythm and blues or soul music or rap music, um, you know, things of that nature. If you're looking for artists, Queen Latifah, Public Enemy, Run DMC, Adele I love, but she's not, uh, she's not rap. I like Adele. Uh, I love Marvin Gaye, uh, uh, Aretha Franklin, but those, I don't necessarily know if your subscribers would know that. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Um, and then in terms of books, um, again, read something that you enjoy. I um, personally, uh, in terms of uh, students have told me in the past, anything related to Daniel Steele, uh, Daniel Steele books, if you like romance, if you like suspense, I would recommend Stephen King. He did a really good book called Mr. Mercedes, which I think is a really good book. Oh. Um, and then also, I would say what I think in, is important in terms of books to read, because it went to your earlier question in terms of anything that's motivational, any motivational book. If you, my final comment in terms of there are three particular books, I'm sorry, four particular books that I have loved and they've made an impact on my life. And I think in many different ways, the, and not in any particular order. The first book that I highly recommend your subscribers and followers to read is uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It talks about financial literacy, which is a, even, and it's in English. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad, number one. Number two is The Godfather. I don't know if I actually told you this, but I actually, I came from the business world and I actually, uh, I, I taught English, as you know, this was my first assignment, but I actually taught, I have two grad degrees, one in business and the other in education. And I actually taught at the college level. I taught The Godfather as a class. Wow. I think that's, that's a really amazing. good book. The third book that I would recommend is a book, uh, kind of like suspense. Uh, there's a book by the name of Perfume, uh, oh. written by a gentleman by the name of Patrick, Patrick Suskin. Particularly if you have students or subscribers of yours that are uh, intermediary or advanced, I find that in, that's a very good book. And the last book that I would recommend, or at least has had a reference in my life, is Rabbit Run by John Updike. Those are just some of the books that I have read. So. I hope that answered your question and I wasn't too long-winded. No, no, no. That was perfect. All right. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Now you have some real names. I'm going to write them somewhere here on the screen for you so that you would be able to Google them and choose whatever you see fit for yourselves. All right. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And pretty much the last question for today is, have you ever taught Russian-speaking students? 
In America, yeah, actually, I'm from, uh, I'm, as you know, I'm from America. I was in, uh, I taught at an English school, actually, where I received my TESOL uh, certification. So before I came to Saudi Arabia for three months, I was honored enough to actually teach at the school there. I ha and also, in addition to that, in Chicago, we have a very large Russian, Ukrainian, Bulgarian population. So yes, when I was at the school, I did teach Russian speakers. All right, you did. Not a lot, that. but I did, yes. So you've had some experience teaching Russian speakers. Very good. So yes. since most of my subscribers are native Russian speakers, mm -hmm. all of them have something in common when it comes to learning English, right? Okay. So uh, I was wondering if you could share some stories or maybe you could tell uh, me and my viewers, my subscribers, what are the most common mistakes Russian speakers make in particular? <laughs> <laughs> let, me finish the, let me finish the question. Russian, Russian speakers make in particular, uh, well, uh, in contrast to uh, speakers of other languages. Excellent. So let me first say with the things that I respect about the Russian, the Russian students, at least that I've had. They are, and in comparison to other students that I have, they're extremely studious. They, at least the ones that I have, they have a goal, they want to study, and they like homework. That has differed from some of the students that I have had from other populations. So I really respected that. Moving on to your question in terms of uh, common mistakes or areas of development. What I would say is this, is that some of the students that I had is that they were more concerned about grammar than fluency. All right. And one of the things that I would like to say to your subscribers is this. Hold on one second, Corel. Public <laughs> service announcement. Hey, Corel followers, you learn grammar intuitively. What becomes important is, is becoming fluent in the language, the same way that you understand your native language. So let me put my glasses back on and be calm. So I would say grammar number one is that they, they thought that English was, uh, that they would become fluent by learning grammar. And they were so focused on grammar that it prevented them from speaking. And my recommendation, do not do that. The second thing that I would say is with some of the Russian speakers that I had was is the aspect of pronunciation just in terms of uh, uh, the B in particular, the letter B and the letter P in particular. Right. Uh, just because it's, um, and I don't speak Russian, uh, but in terms of the pronunciation was a little different. So that sometimes was a, they, they were very frustrated about that. And again, it's okay to be frustrated. That takes practice. The last thing that I would say is, and I don't necessarily know if this is particular to the Russian population, but I would say as overall, is accent. I want American accent. I want, I want to speak like native. I, want, I don't like my accent. Followers. If you're a native Russian, I've never been to Russia. Maybe one day Karel will invite me. Hopefully one day he'll tell me to come. Um, but think about it this way. Followers, if your, native le if your native language is Russian or Ukrainian, well, ask yourself this question. Let's say, for example, if you live in Moscow and then you want to go to, give me a city in Russia, please. I forgot. Let's say, uh, all of them are so long and so difficult. Let's say, um, St. Petersburg. We're, yeah, duh. This is the, short, the shortest one. This yes. is the shortest one I could think of. I could, you know, and I should know that, St. Petersburg, because I actually have some subscribers. I'm sorry, I just, okay, anyway. Let's say you live in Moscow, and then you live in St. Petersburg, okay? And let's say uh, the word for, I don't know what the Russian word is for soda, but let's say it's soda. You both understand soda, but the way that you, there are different accents to it. Well, you know what? The beautiful thing is, is that you both understand. It's this public service announcement. Listen, even us native speakers, we have accent. Stop trying to sound like an American first. Sound like yourself. Don't worry about your accent. Worry about pronunciation, enunciation, saying the words correctly. That was an amazing answer. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Teacher Carell. First of all, let me say, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm, I'm greatly honored. I'm appreciative. And likewise, what I would say to you is, is that uh, I really admire you. You give me inspiration in terms of the great work that you're doing. And I'm not, and I, and I mean this sincerely, for the great work that you're doing on, on YouTube, for the great work that you are doing on Instagram. 
Uh, if your students are not proud of you, then at least I would let you know that you inspire me, I admire you, and it's likewise. So um, hopefully we'll have the opportunity to do this again. And if your followers want to um, just share my contact information with them or whatever of that nature. The last thing that I would say is please followers remember what's very important is, at least in my opinion, if you look at myself and you look at Corel, we both speak English. He's a, he is not a native English speaker. I am a native English speaker. At the end of the day, that does not matter. What matters is, is that you speak English and find individuals that are giving back such as Corel and making a difference. So I just wanted to thank you and um, thank you. Please follow Teacher Will on his YouTube channel and, uh, and on his Instagram. He's got two amazing social media pages where you will find a lot of genuine content and a lot of <laughs> motivation and stuff that will make you want to learn English and move forward with it. And the very last question for today, it just popped up in my head. So okay. I'll be short with my answers. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Go. So how would you describe my, my pronunciation and my level of speaking? I mean, oh, wow. you don't have to be complimentary here. I want you to be frank about it. All right. So I want you to be strict about that. Sure. I definitely will. Excellent. So let me talk about your strengths first. And I think, okay, there are numerous and I'm not, this is the truth. I think that your pronunciation is very good. I think that your usage of vocabulary and overall fluency is extremely, extremely good in terms of grammar, in terms of vocabulary, in terms of phrasal verb expressions and idioms. You, to me, remind me of a near native. And also what I think is, what I particularly like is the fact that you don't, I've seen your videos, I've seen you on Instagrams, and what I like about the fact is, is that when you're speaking, you sound yourself and that you don't try to be anything that you aren't. And so to me, I love that because if you are trying to have an accent, I don't see that. I've never experienced that. You just speak in a manner in which you are. So those I think are in terms of your own uh, particular strengths as it relates to you. As it relates to your subscribers and followers, I love, I love, I love. I, I, I don't know how many times I can say I love. I really I love, admire. Love, love. I, love, I love, 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 love. But let me say this. I love the fact of how you do your videos on YouTube and Instagram. They are very relatable. You have a very unique style. And I think that is very much of your strength. And, and, and I really do admire that. So I think those are all your strengths. So now let's talk about, I don't believe in weaknesses, okay? You know that, or you should know that about me. I would say about your areas of development. Um, number one, not in any particular order. Number one, because there's really only two that I have for you, sir. All right. Wonderful. Number number one is, as I would say, for someone, when you said writing, I would encourage you when you say writing, what in particular about writing and make that in terms of an area of development. If you want to, if you want to, you and I want to talk about that or have sidelines, if you can, but you were too good of an individual and could, and too good of a teacher not to make that, that area development for you because it will even, even enhance your vocabulary even more. Yeah. So writing You're right. number one, number two is, is that I would, when you were talking about, when you were talking about, you have this brain load of information, what I would encourage you to do is, is that, um, and I had this challenge myself because you're such a passionate individual, because you're such a service and because you want to help somebody that's part of your, of who you are as a character. What I would encourage you to do is find a way to speak to the level of your student. If that makes sense. Yes. And yes. so it's kind of like you have all of this knowledge and you want it, but learning how to make it as simple as possible. And recognizing a real, this is, and that's, a, that's an area of development that I had for myself and I still continuously work on that. So I don't believe in advice. I'll give you a suggestion. Imagine that someone is learning English and they're a five, they're five years old and they're, they're your best friend, your son, whoever it is, your son, your family member, whoever. Make it, uh, I'll use this abbreviation, kiss. No, I'm not kissing you. I'm using it as an abbreviation. Here's the area developed for you. Keep it simple, stupid. You're not stupid. 
Just remember Kiss in that. Richard. And don't kill me with that, Teacher Carell. No, no, I won't. Don't I won't. I promise, me. I won't. All right. Thank you. So thank you. well, thank you so much for this interview. So it's been amazing, and um, I, I'm quite sure that my subscriber is going to love it. Love, I love hope it. so. I hope. I th again, thank you. And if your subscribers want to follow me, I'm ask underscore Teacher Will. Teacher exactly. Carell, share that information again. It is the pleasure has been mine, and I'm honored, sir. So thank you. All right. My pleasure, Teacher Will.